In this video, I'd like to look at while loops, specifically event controlled while loops with objects as opposed to primitives. In a previous video, I looked at while loops that were event controlled, and I looked at an example of entering in a pin at an ATM. And that pin was an integer value, and if the pin was correct, the user was able to enter into their bank account. But if the pin was incorrect, the loop would continue until they entered in the correct value. Now with this video, I want to juxtapose that against the example on the screen. And that is, at some point, you've probably logged into an email account, a game account, a bank account, or even logged into your own computer. And when you do this, it usually asks you for your username and password. And the difference is going to be that the username and password are usually going to be strings, which are objects, not integers, which are primitives. So it would look like this, the username and then the password. And the question becomes, how many times does it take to do this? Does it just take once, twice, or an unknown number of times? And we need to know this for all cases, not just one case. Usually, yes, it only takes you one time to log in, but occasionally it's going to take you more than one time. What happens if a finger slips and you type the wrong thing, or you forget your password, or you try another password for another account and try to use it on this one? It's not going to work. And so it needs to loop until you enter in the correct password. That is not going to be a fixed number of times. It's going to be controlled by the event of you entering in the correct password. So as I said, what we're going to do in this one is simulate entering in a computer login. And we're going to use a while loop, specifically an event controlled while loop, to do this. As I said in the beginning, we've done this already with a primitive data type, that being an integer and it simulated entering in at an ATM. But instead of using a pin, we're going to use a password. And instead of using an integer, we're going to use the string data type, which is an object. And password is going to be assigned to an empty string, quote, quote. Then inside of our loop, instead of saying pin not equal to one, two, three, four, we want to use password. And so we're going to use the password open now. And open now is going to be the correct password to log into whatever we're trying to log into. And let's just say we're trying to log into a computer. Then we're going to have to change the inside of our code. Instead of enter your pin, we're going to say enter your password. Instead of saying pin equals scan.nextint, we're going to have to say password equals scan.nextline. Next line indicating that it's a string, not an integer. And then our if statement is going to have to change. Instead of saying pin equals equals one, two, three, four, we want to say password is equal to open now. If they enter in the correct password, we want it to say correct pin. Oh, no, we don't. We want it to say correct password or wrong password. So we change both our if and else statement to reflect password instead of pin. Now, let's see how this would look in code. We'd start with the empty string and inside of this table up here, I've shown the correct password, which is open now, and what the password currently is, which is an empty string. I guess I could have left it blank, but putting in the quotes reminds us that it's empty. Then we go to the next step, which is the while loop. Is password not equal to open now? It's not equal, so that's true. So we continue on, tell the user to enter in the password. I'm going to purposely enter in a wrong password, and that is cal. And so let's see what happens. We get to the if statement. The if statement would be false. We go to the else and print wrong password, try again. And so you can see, we have no idea how many times this is going to take to run. So that's why an event controlled while loop is the perfect solution for this particular scenario. So again, it goes and says, enter your password. We enter in an incorrect password. I entered in the word invalid. That is not correct. It is not equivalent to open now. So we go to the else statement. We get the statement wrong password, try again. And it goes back up to the top. Condition is true again because open now is not equivalent to invalid. Ask them one more time, enter your password. This time we're going to type in the correct password. And so it should say correct password, you may proceed. But unfortunately, when we get to this point, the if statement is going to be false. And you say, well, that's crazy because open now is equivalent to open now. Unfortunately, that's not what it's comparing. What it's really comparing is something called a memory reference. Every time you have a string, it's not actually the string value that's being stored in password. It's just pointing to where it is in memory. So what password is, is it's saying, 
I'm not a password, but I'm just pointing to where it is in memory. And so therefore, it's saying you could find password at C2D2C. And open now, which is our correct password, is stored at BB8C3. So that's why we get a false here. Even if you don't understand what I just said, it's important to know that you cannot use relational operators with objects, particularly strings. So it would go to the else statement and frustrate us with wrong password, try again. In fact, there is nothing that we could type in at this point that would make it correct. This would be an infinite loop, infinitely asking for our password. The question becomes, how could we correct this? Well, what we would do is instead of using equals equals, we would use the equals method of the string class. So we say password.equals open now. And as you can see, I've also changed it down here. We couldn't use the equals equals sign. We would have to say password equals open now. So let's see how this would work. It would start at the beginning. So far, so good. And then we would get here, but it would give us a false result. And a false result would mean the loop wouldn't run, and we need the loop to run. So why is it giving us a false result? Well, the reason is because we're saying equals, not not equals. Password does not equal open now right now. So the only way the loop would run is if someone typed in the correct password, or in fact, if this was assigned to the correct password to start with. Well, we don't want that. So what do we want? We want to say the password is not equal to open now. Well, how do we say not with this equals method? Can we just add an exclamation point right here or type the word not in front of equals? Well, if we tried to do that, it would result in an error. You can't change the method like that. You would use an exclamation point to indicate not, but it wouldn't go there. It would go in front of the string object which is password, and so we would say not password.equals open now. And that would be the equivalent of saying password is not equal to open now. So let's see how the program would work now. We would again assign password to the empty string, check the condition. Yes, finally we get true, it enters in the loop. We would ask the user to enter in their password. I'm going to do a wrong password and type in the word cow. It'd say if password equals open now, that would be false because it's equal to cal. And so we'd go to the else statement, say wrong password, try again. It would come back up to the while loop. It would be true because open now is not equal to cal. We'd ask the user again to enter in their password. This time I'm going to type in the correct password, open now. It would get to the if statement. Yes, that's true. Open now is equivalent to open now. We're not comparing memory references. We are comparing the actual string values. And so we would get what we desire, and it would say, correct password, you may proceed. We would then get to the condition. It would be false and exit the loop. And therefore, the program would work exactly how we intended. So in this example, we can certainly see the power of an event-controlled while loop and also why it's important to use equals with strings or objects in general. So remember, objects are treated differently than primitives. They do not behave or function in the same way, and if you treat them the same, you'll get the wrong results. Always use the equals methods for strings when you're looking for equality. Do not use the relational operator equals equals or not equals. You will not get the correct result because it's comparing the memory reference as opposed to the actual value of the string. And lastly, that exclamation point belongs at the front of the string object. And if this is new to you, it might seem a little odd. When you're saying not equals, you would put that exclamation point in front, put the string or the object, then dot equals, and then the value you're comparing inside of the parameter of the equals method. It is absolute common practice to repeat something inside of a program. And if you're repeating something and don't know how many times it's going to run, the event controlled while loop is the structure to use. And when you're using that statement, it's important to ask yourself, am I using a primitive or an object? Be sure to use the correct method for each, whether it be using an equals method or a relational operator like equals equals or not equals. Thank you so much for watching the video. If you like this video, please do click like below. 
If you'd like to see more videos like this, please do click subscribe. Truly, thanks again for watching.